All right, we now welcome on a uh, special guest. It is the fourth overall pick in the 2020 MLB draft. It is Asa Lacey out of Texas A&M. Asa, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you guys for having me. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's go starting at Texas A&M, 14-5 with a 207 ERA with 224 strikeouts and three in a COVID year of pitching. That's pretty good, and that set you nice up for the MLB draft. You were projected to go third to the Marlins in a lot of MLB drafts with a big gap in potential from the third and fourth pick. Were you shocked that you got to the Orioles? Uh, no, not really. Um, we knew some stuff that, that was occurring, you know, about right before the draft started. And so I, I wasn't surprised at all. And um, I'm actually very, very blessed and grateful for where I ended up. Yeah, kind of touching on that note, Asa, when you were heading into the draft, what was the communication like with the Royals or organization and Dayton Moore? And did you have a pretty strong confidence or at least an idea that you would be going there at number four? Yeah, I mean, I felt very comfortable on all of our Zoom meetings. Um, Dayton was very forward. Um, and just, I mean, just a great speaker, and we were on stage with a lot of um, as well as J.J. Bacolo and Lonnie Goldberg, their scouting director. Um, love those guys. So, yeah, I mean, we definitely saw it as a possibility. There wasn't a ton of communication with the Marlins before. Um, I'd done a few. I'd done a Zoom call with them, but uh, that that was about it. So we kind of went in not knowing what was going to happen with the first three picks, but knowing that, that KC really liked me and I liked them. So it, it worked out. When you look at the Royals uh, draft class these last three years, we see them going for pitchers other than Bobby Witt, of course. But we see them going after pitchers in the very high rounds or low rounds, I guess you can say. Do you look at that as some added pressure on you or do you look at that as like a competition against you guys? No, I mean, I look at it as, as just a great opportunity to compete against those guys and compete with those guys. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a part of this brotherhood now and we have a ton of talented pitching. And I think we really push each other, whether it's spring training, you know, or an A ball, double A, you know, triple A. I mean, all those guys, we want each other to get better. We're all rooting for each other. So I think it's just a great opportunity. Going back to last year after you get picked, it was definitely obviously an odd year. Um, no minor league season, really. What were you doing last summer whenever after the MLB draft, after you get selected? What was it like not having any baseball to play? What were you up to? Um, kind of didn't know what to do with myself there for a little bit. Hadn't right. been summer since high school. Um, continued to train, uh, started picking bullpens back up there right after the draft, actually about right before it. Um, so continued to throw bullpens all summer and uh, essentially was really the first summer I've had. So I got to do a lot of things. I got to go fishing with buddies and, and just kind of enjoy some more family time, play a little golf um, on my free time. But for the most part, I just I stuck to my training routine and luckily A&M uh, put me in their bubble. And so I would get tested weekly um, in order to train them. I had a great place to train over the summer. Talking about Texas A&M, when you look at your stats there, I mean, your first season, you had a great year or a great start, 2.75 ERA, and the ERA just keeps going lower and lower. But when you look at 2020 and with 24 innings pitched and a 0.75 ERA, what was making that, what was making your pitching so effective and just keeping that ERA down and getting the wins? Because you didn't have a single loss. I know it was a shortened season, but that was still a pretty good start to the season. Yeah. You don't have the SEC play included in there, and, you know, it's a joke amongst all of our pitching staff. You know, when you get to the SEC, your, your ERA is probably going to take a little bit of a, a turn a little bit higher. I mean, it's basically double-A baseball. Yeah. But, yeah, just continuing to harness my stuff was the big thing. Um, I was able to really, when I needed to get on a fastball, it wasn't just a waste pitch. I was able to locate really well. And something that Coach Childress and I sat down with that fall was three pitches or less per at bat. Um, I was a high pitch count guy, a lot of three-two counts, um, a lot of foul balls. So we really just wanted to clean things up so that I was able to get deeper into games um, and you know just set our team up in a better position to win. Yeah, through your four years at Texas A&M and then now, I'm just kind of curious, what is in your idea the thing that you've worked on the most and gotten better at the most? And what are you still working on right now that you think is your biggest area of improvement? So I think going into my junior year and, and after the season, uh, I'd really done a good job harnessing my stuff and improving my command. And 
uh, I, I'd, I'd kind of seen all the hard work pay off and having 452 days off of not pitching in a game, you know, I've seen that regress a little bit so far in this minor league season. Um, so yeah, just continuing to improve, improve my command. Um, I, I trust my stuff. I know my stuff's good. Um, so it, it just boils down to, you know, throwing it where you want, throwing it over the plate. When you look at all these Royals prospects being drafted and then making their way up to the big, uh, big leagues, you see them being asked a lot of the time, what does it mean to be raised Royal? And I know your season has been short right now, but what kind of meaning does it have to you to be raised as a Royal? Um, it's just, it, it's really humble beginnings and they preach a lot of just being a good teammate and wanting to be known when your career is over as, um, just being the best teammate possible. And I mean, that's something that Alex Gordon has left behind in his legacy. And so we're all just trying to follow after that, support each other, love each other, and, you know, go out and compete with each other. Since you've been from Texas really your entire life, obviously you were born there and you played college ball there. What's it been like now to kind of venture out with a new team and kind of, you know, for the first time kind of go elsewhere and be elsewhere? I'm sure it's a little bit of a difference for you. Yeah, I, I've been uh, I've been very fortunate throughout my baseball career, my amateur baseball career. I've traveled a lot of places, uh, you know, from summer ball in high school, going all across the country, California, Georgia, Florida, um, and then to Team USA. We were in North Carolina most of the summer, and then we went over to Taiwan, Japan. So I've done my fair share of traveling, um, but just very happy that I'm in the United States playing baseball. Uh, yeah, and then when you go back to uh... – what Josh, I think, was trying to touch on for his internet cut out was that you got drafted back in 2017 by yeah, a rival now, the Cleveland Indians, in the 31st round a lot later uh, than you just got drafted in 2020. Was there any decision really there to not go to Cleveland? Was it a tough decision at all to stay at AM? and What was that decision like getting drafted no, and then no, not no. going to Cleveland? Yeah, that was just a courtesy pick. Um, I, I knew the, the Cleveland area scout very, very well, Kyle Van Hook. And he, uh, I was, ba- I'd, I was flying back from San Diego cause I was at the San Diego pre-draft workout and we thought they were going to pick me and they ended up offering me money in the third round, but it just wasn't a good situation for me. So I ended up getting off the plane and he had called me and said, Hey, we just picked you. It's a courtesy sign, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was very humbling to, to be picked, but it, it had nothing. It wasn't going to pull me away from my decision to go to Texas A&M. And I'm very grateful. I stuck with that decision. Kind of going back, uh, I just heard your answer, but you've went through pretty much every single way of baseball from, I'm assuming from high school now through pro ball, who is someone that you look at for pitching and hope to somewhat match them? Cause I know everybody wants to be their own kind of player, but who is someone that you kind of want to be like? Somebody that I've always idolized has been Clayton Kershaw just over my career and really, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it goes all the way back to, to watching him pitch in his early days and in Los Angeles. And when I was younger, that was that would be the only time I could stay up at at night uh, where the day he would start. My parents would let me stay up and watch him. Just the kind of man he is on and off the field. He's a great teammate. He's a great family man. He does a lot of charity work. Um, and obviously his performance shows on the baseball field as well as he's going to be a Hall of Famer one day. So, Well, I yeah. really hope you can uh, match like, Clean yeah, I think we would be we'd be very content if you matched that career. <laughs> yeah, that's that's some high standards right there. But uh, we've yeah. already got it. We got two lefties down, and, and you know, Clayton Kershaw is the one that got away in Kansas City. We didn't draft them. We had the first pick, so maybe maybe you're gonna make up for that, Asa. Maybe maybe this is maybe this is our reward. I'm sure as sure as heck gonna do my best. <laughs> We're glad to hear it. Um, obviously, though, you know. To the average Kansas City fan, maybe not getting to catch a lot of minor league baseball right now, um, might, maybe just paying attention to the big league roster. Uh, they might not know a ton about you, so I was going to say earlier, but just didn't get the chance. How would you describe yourself to people that don't really maybe know much about you right now, and what do you want people to know about you? Um, well, let's see. Uh, I'm an only child, father and mother, Philip and Cynthia Lacey. Uh, I was born in Bryan, Texas. Um, just been a Texas boy my whole life. Um, I love the outdoors. Uh, I've loved to golf. I've since picked up a lot of golf through quarantine. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just like to have a good time. I'm pretty laid back, except for when I'm on the mound. I'm definitely a competitor. Um, 
When you say yeah. competitor, are you talking about Rain Brady Singer competitor? Where you scream if there's rain? <laughs> or you... I don't think I've ever yelled at the rain, but I've dealt with some rain delays like him. But I don't think I, I quite got that aggressive at the rain. But um, yeah, I'm definitely not a I'm not a happy human being when I'm pit when I'm. So I don't know if you want to talk to me too much. <laughs> uh, so kind of going away from baseball, you being a Texas guy, football's big in Texas. Are you, I'm assuming you're a football fan. Yes, I am a college football fan for sure, more so than the NFL. But okay, well, I mean, I was going to ask: Are you a Houston or Dallas Cowboys fan? Um, probably more of a Texans fan. So that that Chiefs that playoff loss was kind of tough on you then. Yeah, yeah, it was. But I, I like to see Patrick Mahomes succeed. Well, so. hey, I bet you you get to see true. that a yeah. lot in the upcoming years. Yeah, I, I I love to watch him play football. Man, he can sling it. Something else hey, that that's... I found during quarantine too. I forgot what interview you said this in, but you like playing cards. What is your go-to card game? And do you play it in the clubhouse and do you beat everyone in cards? Uh, no, I wouldn't say we play a little bit on the bus here and there. Um, I like blackjack. I've since picked up blackjack. Um, still learning how to play poker. It's going to take me a little bit, but blackjack's definitely my favorite hot topic right now. Yeah. Um, Poker, I, I, that's probably my favorite card game personally, but I am absolutely terrible at it, so I don't really like to claim that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going back, or I guess not going back, but so far the start of this year, you've had, I believe, three starts. Is that correct so far? Yes. And your best one was easily a few days ago on Wednesday. Uh, what was it on Wednesday? I, I believe you pitched five scoreless on Wednesday. What was it on Wednesday that you were able to tune into? Uh, that your earlier starts that you weren't quite getting? What were you able to finally elevate to on Wednesday? What was it in your eyes? I think it just took me a little bit to get comfortable, just get back in game, you know, game mindset, just transition what I've been doing in my bullpens to the game. Uh, my bullpens have all been really good. So, yeah, I just felt a lot more comfortable out there, was able to make pitches when I needed to most, um, got into trouble in a couple innings and was able to work myself out of it. So that's always a confidence booster. Um yeah, I mean, really, it just, it just boils down to trusting your stuff and throwing it over the plate, just making guys hit it. So that, that was what I said going into it. I said, I'm just going to make guys hit the ball, and if they hit it, great. If they don't, even better. When Since you've been in the minors for a little bit, who is someone that you've kind of bonded with that you know if you ever need anything, he you can go to him or vice versa? Oh, I mean, there's really a ton of guys. So early on, just being at the alt side, I was with an older group, most of the 2018 draft guys. Um, O.R. Lynch, both are incredible guys. Um, and I actually, I roomed with uh, Alec Marsh in this past big league spring yeah. training, minor league spring training. And I mean, we're just we're we're great friends already. We hit it off. So I know that if if I asked him for anything, he would drop everything. And so I'd like to be able to say I could do the same for him. Um, as far as coaching goes, I mean, gosh, all of our pitching coordinators are just are great. From Simo to Gibby to Stett. Um, they're all there. They're all great communicators. So I just, I just couldn't be more thankful for all of them. And then, yeah. And to touch on Josh's question, um, has there been really much communication or any communication at all with some of the guys up like Mike Matheny or maybe Cal Eldred, the big league pitching coach? And are they telling you what to focus on down there? Or is it really just the guys that you're dealing with down there that are yeah. tuning you in? Minor league started, you know, they have their, they, you know, they have the big league club to worry about. So they're right. They're, I think I'm um, in big league camp. I got to speak with Mike and Cal a little bit and uh, both. I was impressed with both of them early on, just what kind of men they are. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, earning my way up there and, and getting to work with them. All right. Well, I mean, Jackson, I don't know if you have anything else. We all, we have one final question that we always end every interview with. I'm excited for this answer too. Uh, all right. With this um, for, for security or legal reasons. Well, we no, to, no, not for security reasons. No, it's, for it's legal a fake, reasons. It's a we fake. We have to say this is a simulation because somebody thought this would happen. I don't yeah, know. Obviously, if this big, will never happen. I don't know if you're a big UFC guy, but mm -hmm. who do you think would win in a fight? One, okay. Conor McGregor, or 30 10 year olds, and this is at recess. <laughs> and oh, it, like when I say we recess, ask everybody recess, this, I we mean, ask everybody this. This means yeah. playground rules. Any for shots legal. legal. For legal reasons, um, I'm a huge McGregor fan, so I think, <laughs> I think he would win. But good gracious, uh, that would be a mess. 
It's I tough mean, to think there, about. Is there any reasoning behind that, or do you just think McGregor? Oh, there's reasoning it's because Ace is an intelligent person like me. And... Uh, I think he's just. I think he's just got the the knowledge and the and the swag and the skills. Yep, uh, I agree. And you're all agree. Probably, like all try to come at him at once. See, that's what that's what everyone says. But I'm like, if you give those ten year olds five minutes, you can get them no, from four no. directions. See, here's the thing. See, here's I don't the know. Thing. Go back to looking at yourself when you were a ten year old. I was exactly. There. I was a chubby ten year old. That's the thing. I mean, <laughs> here's no. Here's the thing: is that he's gonna hit one of them, and then the rest of them are gonna see that, and yeah. they're gonna be like, "Oh, I'm not doing that." Because every guest we've had on, almost every single one agrees with me that McGregor would win. But Josh, and then a guy that's not here today, he's also working on the podcast. John, our team thirty ten year olds. So all I ever hear is that. So it's reassuring to hear guys come on here and tell me that I'm right. Yeah. Well, you could have the idea where McGregor just wouldn't want to hit any of them. So, nah, see, I right. Have that there there is never, that. But then, I'm going to lie. But, that's, that's never <laughs> been through my mind. But, but then, but then you got to understand it's not real. So you just pretend it's like a video game. Yeah. This one dude got really mad. He said, Well, what if we make it like 50 raccoons versus Conor McGregor? And we were like, <laughs> I was you like, really uh, thought we, we would do this in real life. Yeah. Okay. I, I was like, 50 raccoons. I can't think about that. All right. Well, Asa, we really appreciate you coming on, giving us the time to do this interview. We hope the best for you. Hope to see you in Kaufman here soon. Happy early birthday, Asa, by the way. Thank, thank you. I appreciate it. Almost almost there. All June right. June 2nd. So yep. probably won't talk to you until then. So have a good one. Yeah, you guys. Big 22. Yeah, thank you for having me on, and you all have a great rest of your day. All right. Thank you. Yep, you too, Asa. One. Look forward to seeing you later. Thank you.